1st, happy Canada Day. I'm on my way up to Kinmount, Ontario, um, doing a small, small version of what was supposed to be the Kawartha Crack, and usually it's a larger event, around 200 people or so, but this year, with scheduling, everything going on, uh, heading off to Romaniac soon, racing, um, work commitments, um, kids, all that stuff, uh, just, I, I couldn't find the time to put in um, the effort to make the usual crack and happen. So we downscaled it, um, ended up getting about 20, 25 uh, members of uh, Quorum together, it kind of uh, soft sold it to people to get out and, and um, try and do a bit of a ride in the area. It's still gonna be a great uh, day and not an insignificant amount of kilometers. I think we're gonna get up to about 100 kilometers, gonna be progressively harder as we go on. Uh, first um, first two hours will be for kind of everyone. Anyone should be able to do it and have a great time. And then as the hours pass, more people will probably decide they've had enough. And then uh, it'll crescendo with a out back, out and back all the way up Millennial Trail and back. So anyway, if you haven't been up to the Gortha region, uh, I highly recommend it. Um, personally, it's my favorite forest, uh, the one that we're going to today, Somerville Forest. It just has everything. It's beautiful, fast flowing. Um, it's also got some harder stuff. If I just had to choose one forest to ride um, within you know, driving distance for me, that would be the one. Anyway, point of this video, um, I thought I'd give everyone um, a bit of a, a catch up on, on uh, where I am since the last video that uh, came out. Um, I'm getting closer to the big event, Red Bull Romaniacs. I'm going to be heading over there in 22 days. And the event itself, I think, starts in 25 days. So I'm flying out to Romania on the 22nd of July. And uh, the event itself, I believe the prologue, which looks particularly difficult this year. They just posted something on Instagram saying that they're going to cater to the, the hard enduro th enthusiast with a bit of a, a nudge nudge wink wink and they put this picture of a guy looking like he was going up some treacherous um, structure right in downtown uh, CBU in any event uh, that's that's how the event starts is the prologue and this year it looks like it's going to be quite the entertainment uh, for those watching live on Red Bull TV so I encourage you to do that when it does go live uh, Red Bull coverage is just amazing uh, tune in check it out and uh, that's the big event that's coming up. And the last video that I put out was the Tough Like Roar video. So quite a bit has happened uh, in between. And most importantly, relating to the video, is I, I had a lot of my gear stolen, unfortunately. So when I got back from Pennsylvania, um, I ended up... Um, you know getting my truck broken into and a camera bag stolen thankfully I had taken out a lot of the stuff in it already but I did get my drone my laptop um, a hard drive with some of the footage on it uh, a lens uh, like a zoom lens and some other stuff a podcasting gear uh, so yeah it was quite a <laughs> quite a, a setback as far as the the production uh, equipment of Big Iron Moto but Anyway, we're back. Um, I'm recording off my GoPro that fortunately wasn't stolen, and I'm going to be using that a lot for the, the footage that's coming up for Romania and everything. Um, what else has happened? I thought, you know, like, uh, I thought I'd give you some reflections on where I am right now with the training and given how close it is right now. So as you probably saw over the, the uh, winter, I was training a lot, and that training focused primarily on cardio, strength training, um, not obviously riding a dirt bike in the winter. And so that's what I was was focused on, is just getting in the best shape I could. And, you know, I, I really, really made, uh, made me realize how important the off-season training is and how much it will persist as you go into the regular training, or sort of the regular season when you're actually riding. Um, because I have felt it so much in my racing um, in the ability to maintain 
a good pace for longer, always feeling fresh. And you can see this, I can see this right on the metrics I use. I use a Garmin to track all my metrics with a heart rate monitor. And what I can see is um, before my heart rate would be spiking very quickly into races. And now um, because of the fitness over the winter time, I've been able to maintain paces for longer and not feel um, fatigued. But more importantly, uh, when you start to feel fatigued when you're racing, you psychologically break down because your focus um, is on the pain and, and what's going on in your body and you can't focus on what you're supposed to be doing, that is paying attention uh, and, and making sure your bike goes between the trees and not into them. Um, so long way of saying, it's you know if, if you're serious about racing and you want to um, try and do better next season, don't underestimate the value of getting in shape in the off season. People look at the off season maybe as downtime and I'm not riding anymore, but that's what I've learned is that actually is the most important part of making sure you have a successful racing or even riding season because uh, of, of that fitness carrying over. And what's been interesting to me as well is once you've established that at a pretty good level, it doesn't degrade quickly and you can do um, even just a couple races um, you know a month and go for some rides and the fitness still seems to maintain I'm not I'm not saying give up and I've been going out mountain biking and doing a lot of things but certainly the intensity of the cardio and the training itself has has gone down significantly but it's been replaced uh, no less in time but be replaced by riding and and more of the competitive stuff so um, yeah it's it's been very helpful and the other thing that's um, been leading up to Romania X it's been very educational is the US Heart Enduro series that has now come to an end um, it ended at, in locked and loaded which was just an incredible experience um, unfortunately the footage I do have some of the footage but not all the footage that I needed and that was part of what was stolen um, but that event was unbelievably good I think despite um, how much I enjoy Tough Like Roar and all the other ones and, and I actually did better at some of the other events um, but Shotgun was to me my favorite uh, hard enduro and I think the biggest lesson I've learned from the US hard enduro series is how uh, comfortable you need to become with pain and just getting through it and just almost learning to just completely embrace, as the Marines say, embrace the suck. Embrace that and keep moving forward, inch by inch. And what I noticed in the hard enduro scene is with these six hour races, the, the experienced competitors, the good competitors, um, they just keep moving. And it's so easy to get two hours into it and feel like things are hopeless, this hill is impossible, these bottlenecks are insane. I can't get anywhere I'm just gonna give up but you don't realize how much you can actually accomplish in 45 minutes even moving just an inch or two um, you know every every few seconds and the, the guys or girls who persist and just keep moving always seem to be the ones who are finishing up high um, on the podiums or at least getting further than the people who will quit and I don't say that lightly because quitting is, um, you know, until you've done these hard enduro series in the U.S., um, I had no appreciation of how difficult it is psychologically, physically, on your bike, everything. And it's very easy, if not expected, to quit. But those that don't, those that just continue on really seem to do well and it's a really good training and I highly recommend that you try this series because your ability to keep going inch by inch um, is what's going to set you apart and I'm hoping that that mentality that I hopefully have adopted since I've done the US Heart Enduro series now um, will persist as I go into Romaniacs so yeah I, I highly recommend that series I um, despite not finishing the championship um, in a podium position. I did do reasonably well. I think I finished sixth overall in vet expert for 
a U.S. National series, or at least the Eastern series, and so I'm 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 proud of that. I I do think I'm capable of much more um, with those lessons I've learned, but that'll be next year because um, I, I um, this year was my first year trying it, and I'd like to go back in with those lessons. And the the other thing I should add about the U.S. Hard Enduro series that's really nice is. Um, it's very tight in the sense that the Eastern series um, is all within a month and a half, uh, April, May. So you go down, if they do it similar next year, Battle of the Goats, you've got Ohio, um, you've got um, uh, Fallen Timbers in Ohio, and then you've got um, the Memorial Day weekend, which is Tough Like Roar and Shotgun, AKA Locked and Loaded. And that weekend is just awesome. Even if you just do one weekend, that's the one to go to on Memorial Day. It's their long weekend. So all within that month and a half, you get in a full series. You get four amazing races. And um, you'll learn more doing that series, regardless of where you find out in your position, than going out riding with your buddies for five years straight. Um, so, yeah, I highly recommend that series. And... Um, uh, so where was I? Anyway, back to um, what's happening with Romania. We've been training a lot. And um, and on that note of training, another thing that I've come to realize um, since I've taken this a lot more seriously, if you want to prepare for these events, whether it's U.S. Hard Enduro Series or Romania or whatever it is you're training for, even just racing um, the XC Series you really have to set a distinction between training and riding. And today for me is a ride. It's nothing to do with training. I will not become a better racer from doing this 100 kilometers today. Not in the slightest. If anything, I may become worse because I'll stub my toe or something. But you have to, you know, that's I think a mistake a lot of people make and certainly one that I made is going into these rides and thinking I'm going to become better at something. And you may learn a lesson here and there if you're riding with better people, which is another key. Always try and ride with better people. But training is something very different. And when I've gone out with people like Shane Cuthbertson and uh, more recently uh, Jake Stapleton um, and uh, a lot of my friends who are really good riders um, and people who are coming to Romaniacs like... um, my friend Tony DeMilta, Chris Cerrone, uh, Steve Buckin, uh, Scott Thornton, um, Lance Webb. Um, there's a whole collective of, of people going, Canadians this year. And um, when we go out to train, um, it's just such a very, it's such a different ride. And we may only do 10 kilometers, but we're focused on doing something over and over again until we get it right, until we make sure that we've got for example a particular uh, ascent or descent down that we feel comfortable and the only way you're going to do that is do it over and over again so if there's one really difficult obstacle what you'll find is if you do a ride every time you come back to that obstacle it's going to be just as difficult if not harder the next time but if you stop and just play on that what obstacle whether it's a big log or a big rock or a splat or maybe a steep hill that you need to do a couple pivot turns on if you just sit there for an hour and determine determine to just figure out how to do it perfectly that you will master that that section and if you do it once it just gets more and more refined but you have to do it in a very short period of time and that's what we've been working on um, with training with with everyone is just sessioning Um, and and doing it over and over again and that's the real difference so you know don't get me wrong I love riding and 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 I actually enjoy rides more like I'm gonna have an amazing day today I know this is gonna be an awesome day just having a nice casual ride as far as enjoyment this is very um, this far superior for an enjoyment but it's not the same as training and when we're going out to train you know, we may only hit two or three obstacles of any real significance. And you, at the end of it, it's almost like you feel like you've left the gym. 
as opposed to you've got some beautiful pictures and fun memories and things like that. So that's another really valuable lesson that I'm hoping carries over to Romania is the benefits of where my training has taken me um, in this in hopefully developing enough skill. Another thing I'll say about that is kind of ties into the U.S. Hard Enduro series is when you ride with better riders like Jake and Shane and competing against people in the U.S. Hard Enduro series, it is extremely humbling and you realize how much better they are but how much better you can become as a rider when you ride with with better riders and and I see sadly a lot of people shy away from riding with better people and I don't know if it's an ego thing and you know even even older riders it's surprising to me that people still are quite insecure about their riding especially when the better riders in my experience are, couldn't care less whether or not you're good or not um so you don't, you know, you don't ever need to be nervous about that and holding people out or whatever it is. Good riders are never held up. They will gladly session a rock over and over again um, that, you know, they may not do if they're out with their faster friends. So um, anyway, when you ride with better riders, um, you start to realize how much more work you have to do. So the U.S. Under Hard Enduro Series, riding with Jake and Shane, have really um, put things into perspective uh to me to to realize how much more i need to do and how much you know and i'm at the point now where i can't do any more um not to say i can't be better i certainly can i need to train more but i'm at the point now where i'm i'm two and a half weeks out it is what it is and i feel confident going into this it is in no stretch going to be easy and um i do I, I, I do feel that I'm going to be able to finish silver and whether or not I do, I think that's going to relate to factors outside of my control and not to do with my training. And, um, you know, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I completely underestimate how difficult silver is. Um, but, uh, at this point there's no sense in doubting myself. And so I'm confident that I'm going to finish this and get, uh, that class done for Red Bull Romaniacs. And, if I don't, I'm comfortable with that too, because any way you look at it, it's going to be an experience. Um, so, um, yeah, bit of a Canada Day speech and, uh, let's say speech, but I guess rumination of, uh, of, uh, what's happened up to date. And I'm just coming up to Somerville Forest now. Um, we're going to start off with a moose changing clinic. There's some people there who've coming along some uh, newer riders I suggested r racing uh, or not racing riding mooses today um, and um, some people haven't changed mooses before so I thought I'd maybe do a quick clinic on that before the ride starts up at nine o'clock so uh, if you want to see how to change a moose well that's gonna happen right now so I uh, hope you stick around it might be a longer video today but on big iron moto TV but it'll be a fun one there's lots of uh, Lots of enthusiasm over this ride. I'm really looking forward to doing this uh, this event today, and um, and we'll see how some of those lessons might carry over to Red Bull Romaniacs. Oh, look who we have here! None, none other than the OCR president, racer extraordinaire. How's it going, buddy? How you doing? Good, man. Yeah. Oh, the that two stroke good. today. Oh yeah. Yes, well, sir. the other one's in there too. It's going to be a hard enduro adventure. Yeah. Well, progressively. Progressively. Yeah, we'll start off with light enduro. Yeah, we need to, the thunderstorms need to kick in too. Wish.com enduro. And then <laughs> we'll, we'll move, we'll move to the, uh, the Holt Renfrew of enduro. This is what Rob is riding here today. Uh, safety first. <laughs> and then as the day moves on, depending on how he feels, he might take off the training wheels. Yeah. It's got a big iron moto sticker on it. Oh yeah, there it is. The future. And then first thing, obviously, make sure the direction's the right way. So here we go with the sprocket. Good. First thing I always do, set up this rim lock so that you can make sure it's it's wedged in here. You're gonna find this part a lot harder with a front tire because it doesn't have the flexibility. But like I was saying earlier, this is kind of the only part where there's a, there's a bit of muscle required. Um, yeah, it's definitely easier with like two people to hold the stand down and stuff, but it's definitely manageable by yourself. 
and just kind of get this lower bead in because once this lower bead gets in then everything else just becomes How's it going? easier. So there you go. As you can yeah. see, this one's so much easier. Way than easier the, than a front, front right? Yeah. So then I just kind of take my fingers and kind of make sure that the moose goes in as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I tried crystal once. Bead buddy here, bead buddy it. here to start. I took it the cord last year and it was so like dust. Really? But you had, maybe it was like wrong. Right? And then again, <laughs> so you got to make sure yeah. after you do that, make sure that this is moving freely here because and ideally like if you can get it in enough you might even be able to get it it's kind of just secured under there a little bit which helps set it in place later on but the tension as you move this along it will bring it in anyway so once you're set like this it becomes very easy you're just making small bites all the way around and with the especially with the bead buddies they're designed in a way that they'll they'll try and They'll just kind of move it into the bead. So you can see right now that that rim lock, which is the most important part, mm -hmm. is setting there nicely. Yeah. It's yeah. So, so you can just kind of keep doing one, two, one, two, all the way around. I think best practice is to try and set the final bite across from uh, this guy here. So what I sometimes do is I'll take out one of these bead buddies. And just gonna use it near the end to set my, my second last one. Okay. Now, now I'll just go to the other side. <laughs> yeah, nice small bites as you're going around. And then again, if you start to see it biting like this, just make sure that as best as it is, it's sitting under there. Because if it's not sitting properly, then you're not going to have the three run the risk of... Now you can't just wrench on this because then you'd, you'd break the bead. So you kind of have to slowly go around so that it sits as you're, as you're pulling on it. So just take, take small, small bites. Small bites. Even just an inch at a time. And then like I was saying earlier, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, but if you put this final one here, sort of a big a big lever here, you set it in as it tensions up, you're gonna be able to make that final pull pretty easy. Yeah, because getting a lever in after, yeah, after this next bite, it would be very difficult. Very difficult, right? Yeah. So take that one final one up, in up. there. There, and then that one, boom. Oh, wow. So. You're gonna wrestle. You wrestle with it a little bit. I mean, yeah. you know that happens. But, but honestly, it's like just Rob about. Was saying I find moose is so much yeah. easier and less stressful because with tubes, you not only are you doing this, but you're also like to pinch it, yeah. right? So what I actually do now when I'm doing tubes is I inflate it to the point where the tube almost looks like a moose, so that mm -hmm. I have that ability to know it's set or not, and then I, I prevent uh, pinch flats a lot right. more. All right, we're about to head out. I'm just getting my stuff ready here. GoPros, all that sort of stuff. And one of the things I'm doing with this ride is I'm using this to test out some new gear. So I got this new one right here. Take that off, tags on and everything. Try out this, it's for Romaniacs. I'm trying to get a close setup to what it's gonna look like at Romaniacs. So doing a Purdue testing, this, GPS, all that sort of stuff. So if you guys want to do that too, then that's good because then we'll start here and then we'll cross over. Um, so I'd say be back here in about 10 minutes, just rip around.
hope I didn't roost you. Oh, not at all. <laughs> Sorry, man. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Casual Canada Day ride. Okay.
um, but it can be very, very muddy, pretty treacherous in parts. We don't want to do this trail alone. This is going to be the uh, afternoon ride for the towards the mini cracking day. Take a picture. Kiddo, open wheelie, you'll be fine. Yeah, we're doing pretty well, making a good time. Uh, so there's a huge like. Oh, was that? Oh, okay. yeah. There's that one, and then there's another one coming up. It's like I, really, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like impossible. How dry that was. Yeah. Before it was a massive lake. <laughs> So far bad. Yeah, that beaver dam's new. Adventure. <laughs> that was nuts. That was not what I had in mind. You wanted somebody to break that in for you. Yeah, exactly. Nice! Yeah! Nice, Roy! 
crank. That gives the tunnel of love? Yeah. That log was not in a good spot. It was, it was actually this right like perfectly rail slided me. Oh man. Well, thanks for bringing it to my attention. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> my pleasure. That's a, I'd like to play that role for you. day. It was a good one though. Very rewarding. Great group of guys to ride with and uh, great training for Romaniacs.